Very good morning to you and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to the family. We're so glad to have you here with us. Make sure that you grab your pen, your Bible and your notebook to take down what we've got in store for you today. Make sure that you share this with an auntie, an uncle and a friend so that they can be blessed just as much as you're about to be blessed. And just remember as we're finishing off the year, let's finish off strong. And this year's theme has been rooting, grounding and making disciples. Make sure that you remember that as we just explore the word together. Be blessed and enjoy the word. Thank you. I greet you all in the lovely and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I trust you are well. I trust you are kept in the grace of God. Even during these holidays, I uh, will trust that God will minister to you. We trust that God will open your eyes. Even as we step into the new season, I trust that the Lord will minister to you in such a great way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, I just want to encourage you. You know, I want to talk about, you know, raising a, a consciousness, you know, a Jesus consciousness. You know, that conscious that, that, that is, that is Jesus-centered uh, or focused. You know, most of the time, people are conscious of a lot of things. Sometimes we are conscious of things that do not matter. We know we become so conscious of people, we become so conscious of men, we become so conscious of so many things until we forget that we should be conscious about Jesus. You know, you can be change conscious, you know, you can be uh, pastor conscious, you can be prophet conscious, apostle conscious, more than you are Jesus conscious. And but what is very, very important is for you to develop a Jesus consciousness. And this is what I'm trying to encourage each and every one of us to, to be like today, to be Jesus conscious. You know, that our focus should be Jesus more than anything else. It's Christ in you. It's not a pastor in you. It's not an apostle in you. But it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It should be the focus of our lives today. So we're just going to read from Hebrews chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 1 and 2. Uh, that is our text today. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. It reads, God who at sundry times and in divers men has spent in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by your son, whom we have uh, whom we have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. You know the word of God is, is telling us here, the apostle Paul is writing to the Hebrews and uh, all that he's trying to do is to reveal the superiority of Jesus Christ uh, or comparing him with the prophets, comparing him with the angels, comparing, comparing Jesus with Moses, comparing Jesus with Aaron, comparing Jesus with all the priests, comparing Jesus with all manner of things. He's touching a lot of things, even up to chapter 7. You know, where he's just making a comparison of Jesus and showing how greater Jesus is than any other person or any other thing. Uh, that exists in the world. So he reveals to us that Jesus is superior than angels. He reveals also that Jesus is superior than prophets. He reveals that Jesus is superior than all oh, Amon than, than the priest, than Moses, than Aaron. So all these things he reveals to us that Christ is superior. All that he wants us to do is to be Jesus conscious than, uh, than to be man conscious or to be Moses conscious or to be uh, Aaron conscious or to be low conscious or to be change conscious but all that he wants he wants us to be Christ focused he wants us to be Christ conscious so this is what I just want to encourage each and every one of you today that you know we should focus on Jesus you know Jesus is great I was just reading it this morning I just noticed something amazing about uh, about Jesus and even when he was born he was born in a manger but though in a manger he was still greater though in a manger he was still superior though in a manger he was still greater because uh, all these guys they came from the east they brought gifts they brought everything and the Bible says they worshipped him you know he was great though he was a baby yet he was still great though he was a baby yet he was still superior though he was born in a manger there was no end to let him in but though he was born in a manger he is still great and he remains great he remains uh, powerful he remains the king of kings he remains the lord of lords he is worshipped even at that moment even in a manger he is worshipped even in that place where uh, no one was born in that's where he was born. But even in that very place, he was worshipped. In that very place, he was recognized that he is greater. He is superior. You know, so Christ is superior. At whatever time in your life, Christ will remain superior. He is greater. So here in Hebrews chapter 1, we are told that God is sunless times. In time past, 
God spoke unto our fathers in diverse manners, but now in these last days has He spoken unto us through His Son. You know, you're saying, okay, God spoke to people in different ways. He spoke to them through visions. He spoke to them through dreams. He spoke to them through prophets. He spoke to them through angels. He's saying all these were the ways how God spoke to men. But the greatest way how God has spoken to men up to this very day is through His Son. If there's any other superior way that God has spoken to men, it's through His Son. I've seen a lot of people that are looking for visions. I've seen a lot of people that are desiring that God will speak to them through dreams. I've seen a lot of people that pray, that spend a lot of time praying and I mean asking that God will show them a vision, that God will speak to them through a vision and everything. I will tell you my brother, the Lord has already spoken unto us through His Son. All that you need to know, all that you need to understand is what is it that God has already said through His Son. Now that is very, very important for you to understand. You know, it's not about how God spoke to you. It's not about the visions. It's not about the dreams right now. But it's about, I mean, it's about Jesus because He has spoken unto us in these last days. He has spoken unto us through Christ. You know, He spoke through Moses. He spoke through Elijah. He spoke through Abraham. He spoke through a lot of different people and a lot of prophets in the Old Testament. He didn't even speak through angels. Yes, it was God. But the greatest way that God has spoken unto us right now is through Jesus Christ. Christ, our Lord. You know, that's the greatest way that God has spoken unto us. So here, the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, he spoke unto your fathers in different ways. But now, at this time where we're living in right now, he has spoken unto us through his son. We need to understand as we look at the scriptures, you'll notice that in the Bible is divided into three parts. There is this part called the time past, and then there is this part now that we call the but now in Christ Jesus, and there is the other part that we call the coming ages, meaning what is coming in the future. But right now where we are, we are in the but now in Christ Jesus. You know, if you read in chapter 2 of Ephesians, you will hear the Apostle Paul using this language. Uh, Consistently, you know, he says one time, you know, in time past you were Gentiles without God, without a covenant, you know, but then he says, but now, in verse 13, he will say, but now in Christ Jesus, because we are living in the but now. So, but now in Christ Jesus, God has spoken through his son now. He has spoken through Christ now. That's the superior way how God has spoken to each and every one of us. He has spoken unto us through his son. But the greatest question is, what is it that he has spoken through his son? What is it that God has said through his son? You know, I'm going to share these truths. I know a lot of people uh, don't see things probably the way I'm just going to say them today. But I want to help you to understand and I want to help you to see these things. The moment you understand this, the moment you see things this way, you'll be set free, you know, you'll be in liberty, you'll understand a lot of things. That way it's so difficult for you to understand. The first thing I want to talk about right now is in what God has spoken through His Son. What is it that God has spoken through Jesus in your life? The first thing that God has spoken through Jesus in your life, God has already spoken every good blessing in your life. God has already spoken every blessing in your life right now. You know the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1. That blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has. Not who is going to. Not who is about to. Not who can. But you know he says who has blessed us. With every spiritual blessing. In the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. If there is anything that God has already spoken through your son. He has spoken a blessing over your life through your son. There is no amount of money that you can give. That can give you the blessing of the Lord. There is nothing that you can do. That can give you the blessing of the Lord. What made you blessed. What brought the blessing in your life. Is not what you did. It's not what you can do. But what brought a blessing in your life. Is what Jesus did on the cross. I really want to explain this thing. If you look in, in Deuteronomy 28, there is a promise of the blessing of the Lord that is made to the children of Israel. So they are told that, you know, if you shall do according to what is written in the book of the law, then these blessings shall come upon you. You shall be the herd and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You shall be blessed coming in. You shall be blessed going out. You will be blessed in the field. You will be blessed in the city. All these are the blessings that were spoken. But this blessing was conditional. There were conditions around this blessing. And the condition around this blessing was you. If you do according to what is written in the book of the law, if you do according to what is written in 
the book of the Lord, then these blessings shall come upon you. So they could only come upon someone because someone has done according to what was written in the book of the law. But now Jesus Christ came and he died for us. He is the only man who kept it in the law perfectly and fulfilled it perfectly. There is no other man who kept the law perfectly. If there was a man who kept the law perfectly and, uh, and did not stumble in it, then today it would be a different thing. There was no need for Jesus to come. There was no need for Jesus to, to come on earth because God would have a man who kept the law perfectly, meaning that, okay, that man could have uh, obtained salvation through the law. But there was no man who could do that. It's only Jesus who kept the law fully. Because Christ kept the law fully, one time the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And when he comes upon him, he says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And what does he say? He says, Hear him. You know, it's about Jesus. It's about his superiority. It's about him on focus. One time, uh, Peter, James, you know, John, they were transfigured together with Jesus. You know, in the in the mount in the mountain they were transfigured. So when they were transfigured, the Bible tells us that you know uh, Moses appeared. It tells us Elijah appeared. You know, and they were in that cloud. And then Peter suddenly says, "It is good for us to be here. It is a beautiful moment for us to be here. Why can't we make another tent for Jesus, another tent for Moses, another tent for Elijah?" You know. Then when he said. When he said that, the moment he said those things, the Bible says, you know, that cloud came back, that glory came back, and a voice spoke and says, this is my beloved son. Hear him. He did not say, hear Elijah. He did not say, hear Moses. But he said, hear him. Who? Jesus. Because the focus should be Jesus, not Moses, not Elijah, but the focus was supposed to be Jesus. So now all I was trying to say is, when Jesus is Moses, the man who kept the whole law, that's the son the Bible says, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. He was well pleased by Jesus only. You know, because why? He's the only man that kept the law. There is no other place in the Bible where you hear God says, this is my beloved son, and I'm well pleased in him. It's only in Christ that he says something like that. Why? Because he kept the law fully. Therefore, because he kept the law fully, all the blessings that we, we, we promised rested upon Jesus. And now that blessing comes upon my life, not because of what I've done, but it comes upon my life because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And because of what he did, that blessing by the virtue that I'm in Christ Jesus, by the virtue that I'm already in Christ Jesus, and Christ is in me, that very blessing rests upon my life. Because of that, not because of what I've done. There is no amount of good things that I can do. There is no amount of good works that can attract the blessing of God in my life. The only thing that attracts the blessing of God in my life is Christ's obedience to God. Is Christ's obedience to the cross. Is Christ's obedience to what God did. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know and I want you to understand that you know we are blessed not because of what we have done. We are blessed because of Jesus, because of what Jesus Christ did. Therefore, He has spoken the blessing over your life right now. You are blessed. You are not cast. It's not true. You have been blessed. If you're in Christ Jesus, then the blessing of the Lord is resting upon your life because you are in Christ Jesus. So we need you. We need to rest. In that very truth, we need to rest in that very truth that we are in Christ Jesus. And because we're in Christ Jesus, and by the virtue that we're in Christ Jesus, we are therefore blessed. So you are blessed because you're in Christ Jesus. You are blessed because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the blessing of the Lord is resting upon your life. You know, the other thing again, what does it mean that Christ, you know, God has spoken through your son. God has already spoken through your son. What have you spoken into your life? He has already spoken acceptance. You know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 again, that, you know, we have been made acceptable in his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of His grace. You are acceptable in Christ Jesus. You were made acceptable. I've seen a lot of people struggling you know, with condemnation and a lot of things because they believe they're not acceptable. They think they're not acceptable. They think they're acceptable because they've done something right. They think they're acceptable because they pray every day. They think they're acceptable because they read their Bibles every day. They think they're acceptable because they go to church every day. That's not what made you acceptable. When you you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you were made acceptable in Him. 
You are acceptable in Christ Jesus. Despite what you've done wrong, despite how you've gone wrong in your life, you are still acceptable in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it's not a man that made you acceptable. It's Christ. It's God who made you acceptable in Christ Jesus. Not because you're worth not because there was something special about you. Not because there was something glorious about you. There was nothing to desire in you. But even though it was like that, because of His mercy, because of His grace, you were made acceptable in His beloved Son. I want you to know that you are acceptable in Christ Jesus. Despite what you have done wrong, despite how you have missed the mark, I want you to know you are still acceptable. God still loves you. God is still for you. And I want you to develop the culture that Christ is in you. And you are acceptable in Christ. Jesus and we need to walk in that consciousness that we are acceptable in Christ Jesus. Some of us we fail even to pray, we fail even to read the Bible, we feel like we have done the most wrong things and we believe that God doesn't accept us anymore. It is not true. You are still acceptable in Christ Jesus. You know, that's the reason why most of the time when we share the scripture, people will say, oh, they're encouraging people to sin. They're encouraging people to do things wrong. No, that's not what we are saying. But I want to tell you that you are acceptable. The Bible tells us that, you know, when sin abounded, grace much more, you know. And the word that is used there is hope. It means, you know, uh, it exceeds, you know, it super exceeds, you know, so there is no amount of sin or wrongdoing that can outsin the grace of God. You know, the grace of God is so huge. This is the reason why the Bible says, in a whom we have redemption according to the riches of His grace. There is absolutely no man that can measure the riches of His grace towards us. God loves you so much. God loves me so much. You know, so there is no amount of wrongdoing that can, uh, uh, that can outsee the very grace of God in our lives. But I do not encourage people to sin because there is the grace of God. And we don't always do that because we don't, we don't make mistakes because we know that there is the grace of God. But because the grace of God is there, I am not afraid, I am not conscious of sin, I am conscious of Jesus in me. And this is exactly what each and every one of us should be able to do. We should be able to be Jesus conscious more than we are sin conscious. You know, most of us, the reason why we constantly fall into sin, I always say that we are sin conscious more than we are Jesus conscious, more than we are righteous conscious. So because of that, you know, we easily fall into anything that we are conscious of. We easily fall prey of anything that we are conscious of. So if you're conscious of sin, then that means, you know, sin will always be your portion. But if you're Christ conscious, Christ will constantly be your portion. So it is very, very important for us to notice that we should be Christ conscious more than we are sin conscious, uh, more than we are change conscious, more than we are law conscious. Some are law conscious more than they are Jesus conscious. I've seen that so many times. This is the reason why now they feel like they're not acceptable when they've broken the law. They feel like they're not acceptable when they've done something wrong because they are not Christ focused. They are not Christ conscious but they are sin conscious, they are law conscious, some of them, they are, they are change conscious in such a way that they think that if they make some mistakes or if they are not acceptable in a church, it means that they are not acceptable in Christ Jesus. It is not true. In Christ Jesus you are acceptable. There is no man who is not acceptable right now in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that you are acceptable in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord forever. So I want you to know that and I want you to understand it is very, very important. Now that you know, as we continue talking about this, you know, he has spoken unto us through his son. So what is it that he has spoken through his son? What is it that he has spoken through his son? Now if you continue to read in Ephesians chapter 1, it should tell you that he is abounded towards us in wisdom and in prudence. He is abounded towards you and I in wisdom and and in prudence. So if there is anything that God has spoken over in our lives, He has spoken wisdom over our lives. You know, I know that a lot of people, if you read in James chapter 1, you know, uh, it talks about if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask from the Father, you know, uh, who gives liberally. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's true. We should ask for wisdom if we believe we lack wisdom. But one thing that I know in Ephesians chapter 1, we're told that Christ is abounded towards us in wisdom. I believe even that thing is written even to baby Christians to say, now ask for wisdom if you like, ask for wisdom. But right now we are here, I understand that I have 
and wisdom will guard in me. Because Christ has abounded towards me in wisdom and in prudence. I have got wisdom in the inside of me. You have got wisdom. In, it's in you. You need to understand that there is wisdom that you need right now in you. The Bible tells us also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8, you know, it tells us Christ has been made unto us righteousness, sanctification, wisdom, and redemption. This is what Christ is to us. He is wisdom. He is our wisdom. If he's in you, you've got that wisdom in the inside of you. He's already spoken wisdom into your life. You have got wisdom. You know, wisdom is not being clever, but wisdom is knowing what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. You know, we have got the wisdom of God in us. It's already in you. It abides in you. Yes, if you feel like asking, if you feel like you left wisdom, someone, yes, do ask. But one thing that I know is I already have these things in Christ. These things are in me. I've got the wisdom of God in the inside of me. I speak that wisdom of God that is in the inside of me. You've got the wisdom of God in you. You know, this is one thing that God has already spoken through your son. He has spoken wisdom through your son. He has spoken redemption through your son. He has spoken all these things through your son, even in our lives. God has already spoken joy into our lives. God has already spoken peace into our lives. You know, the word of God tells us, you know, that we shouldn't be anxious of anything. But with prayer and supplication, we should make our request down unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, who guide our minds and our hearts in Christ Jesus. So if there's anything that each and every one of us we need to develop, we need to develop that consciousness, you know, that Jesus consciousness in the inside of us. You know, I always say this to people, that you know, it was never, if you want to understand something about the gospel, the real thing about the gospel was not that Christ was going to come and die, it was known that Jesus was coming. It was known that Jesus was going to die. It was never a secret to anyone that Jesus was going to come into this world, that he was going to die for us. That was not a secret. Every Jew knew that the Messiah is coming. The prophets spoke about him. They prophesied about him. They knew that Jesus was coming. It was never a secret. But the secret is thus, ladies and gentlemen. And it is found in Colossians chapter 1. And the Bible says that you know there was a mystery that was hidden for ages that has been revealed now in our time. And it says that mystery that has been hidden for ages. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If there was anything that was not known to man, was that Jesus Christ was going to come and live in the inside of you. That was not known. No one knew that thing. This is why the Bible says, even the angels, they desire to look into these things. What are they looking into? They want to understand. What does it mean that Jesus lives inside of a human being? What does it mean that the God who created the heavens and the earth lives inside a human being? What does it mean that the God who spoke to the mountains and the melted like wax? What does it mean that the God who, who spoke to the mountains and the skipped like cows, that very God lives in the inside of a man? This is one thing that they try to understand. This is one thing that the angels have desire to look into. That how does the God of the universe that we continue to bow down to and to worship daily, every second, every minute, how does that kind of God and live in the inside of a human being? This was a mystery. This is exactly what was not known from the beginning of the world. It was a secret that was kept by God. It was a secret that was kept, that is being revealed now to the children of men. And he says that very mystery, this thing that was hidden, it's nothing that, that is out of this world, but this thing that was hidden is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, you have got Christ in you. You need to develop this consciousness. Every day of your life as you walk, have a Christ consciousness. It's unfortunate in our days that people have their prophet conscious. My prophet said to me, our prophet said this, our pro apostle said this, our what was said this. You know, people, they are about their pastors, they are about, they're conscious about their prophets, they're conscious about the things that they're told by them, more than they're conscious about what Jesus is already saying in their lives. They're so conscious of getting a blessing, they're so conscious of getting a blessing from a prophet than actually enjoying the blessing that they already have in Christ Jesus. It's so sad that we're living in such days when people are just focusing on what is wrong. They're focusing on the wrong thing. They're focusing on a prophet instead of focusing on Christ in them, the hope of glory. You know, they're focusing on church activities more than they're focusing on Christ 
who is in them, the hope of glory. They're so focused on a lot of things. You know, I see a lot of things that uh, are so weird in our days, you know. Uh, there are good things that people do. There are good things that I encourage people to do. But they shouldn't do those things thinking that when they do those things, then they'll earn the blessing of God. Then they'll earn the goodness of God. There's absolutely nothing that anyone can do to end the goodness of God. There is no amount of cleaning a church auditorium that will give you the blessing of God. You already have the blessing of God. That's the reason why you clean the auditorium. You, you, you will serve in the house of God, not because, you know, so that you can get a blessing or anything like that. You're going to serve in the house of God because you know that you're already blessed. We are doing things from a point of being blessed, not a point from a point of trying to obtain a blessing because we already have that in Christ Jesus. We are not doing things from a point of being acceptable in Christ Jesus, but we are doing things from that point that we have been acceptable in Christ Jesus. Therefore, that's the reason why we do what we do. We are not doing it so that we will gain acceptance. We are not doing this thing so that we will get the blessing of the Lord. We are not doing these things so that we will get wisdom. No, we are doing all that because we already have these things. That's the reason why we do the things we do. You know, I want you to understand that. And I want you to walk in that consciousness of Christ in your life. Christ is in you. Whatever you need is in you because Christ is in you. The Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You are one spirit with Christ. You know, we are co-heirs co with Christ. We are joined heirs with Christ Jesus. So I want you to know that Christ is in you. And I want you to constantly develop that consciousness in you that Christ is in you. And because he's in you, he is superior, he is greater, he is greater than the prophet you can hear in your church, he is greater than the apostle you can hear in your church, he is greater than the pastor you're listening to, he is greater than everyone. Listen to the Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is why the apostle Paul was writing this thing to the Hebrews. He, was, you know, he knew that the Jews uh, took pride on their prophets, they took pride on the angels, they took pride on all, on, on, on priesthood, they took pride on all these things. And he was saying to them, Christ is greater than all those things. And I want to say to you, my brother, Christ is greater than the prophets. Christ is greater than the angels you desire to see every day. Christ is greater uh, than, than, than any priesthood, than any pastors, than any apostles, than any so-called prophets. Christ is greater than them. And I encourage you to focus on Him who is greater. Focus on Him who is superior. Focus on Him who is bigger you know, than focusing on man. I just want to encourage you today to, even as we go into a new season in our lives, you know, just develop that Christ consciousness. Where every day you wake up and you're just thinking Christ in me. You're focusing on Christ in me. Even when you're fast with trouble, just look for the help is within you. The help is in you. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. There's nothing that can go so wrong in your life that cannot be corrected because Christ is in you. There's nothing that can be so bad that it cannot be mended because Christ is in you. Just focus on the Christ in you. Just allow the Christ in you to minister to you. So that's so not free for you even as we come to a close. You know, so I pray for you, so I pray for you even as you step into the new season of your life. I so I pray for you, pray for you that you be focused on Christ Jesus, that you be focused on what Christ is doing in you. Amen. Because the word of God says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is Christ in you and he is greater than anyone who is in the world. He is greater than where you have put your hope right now. Maybe you did put your hope in pastors, you did put your hope in prophets, you did put your hope in a particular church. I want to tell you that Christ is greater than the church. He's greater than the prophet. He's greater than that minister. He's greater than that minister. He's greater than each and every one of them. And I want you to focus on Christ in you. So I'm just going to pray for you right now, even as we come to a close. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you, Father that they are already blessed in Christ Jesus. I pray that you help them raise that consciousness and that they are blessed. I pray that you help them understand, you know, what, what does it mean that God has already spoken unto us through his son. 
that God has already spoken that blessing that they're looking for. I pray that they will understand that God has already spoken that peace that they're looking for. I pray that they understand that God has already spoken through your son that joy that they're looking for. I'm praying that they understand that God has already spoken through your son, you know, about that prosperity that they're looking for somewhere else. I want, you know, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for them that their focus will be on you. I'm praying for them that they will focus on you. You know, Christ in them, the hope of glory. May you open our eyes to see that you're greater, to see that you're superior, to see that you're greater than those people, than those things that we put our hope in. Father, may we understand, all of us, that our hope is in you and that you're the very great God we have. In that lovely and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, even as you enjoy your week. In Jesus' name, amen.